All right, here we go. Brand new Flyers Daily for the 17th of April, 2024. Flyers Daily, as always, presented by Ticketmaster. Make more memories live. The season has come to its conclusion. As the Flyers last night, turns out it wouldn't have mattered, but it turns out they lose to the Washington Capitals. Score of 2-1, to one. very rare that you see a game-winning goal as an empty net goal, but that's exactly what happened uh, in the Flyers game against the Capitals. Um, it was a drama-filled, very intense night. As you go into the third period, tied at one, Detroit trailing in their game. And look, we wouldn't have found out whether they got in or not last night anyway. They just would have lived for another day and would have had to wait till tomorrow to see if the Penguins won or lost against the New York Islanders. But uh, there was definitely a tension in the building for Game 82. And as it played out, I remember doing the second intermission with Brian Smith and I and saying, I don't know what the next hour has in store for us, the next hour of real time from when the third period began and uh, the hockey night would conclude. Uh, but it was intense, and it was drama-filled. And I'm not afraid to say it, it's disappointing where it ended up um, that the Flyers will not be going on to the postseason. As you guys know, I fought the urge of using the playoff word for a very long time this year. I did not believe this year would be ticketed towards the playoffs or even battling for a playoff position beyond mid-March. Um, and here we sat last night on the 16th of April with it still as a possibility. Now, not a possibility you had control of in that seven-game or eight-game skid of where they went 0-6-2 and two, took that power away from them. Uh, but we sat there on the final day of the season battling for the playoffs. And look, make no mistake about it, about anything that we've talked about over the past couple of weeks or this season, making the playoffs is not some feather in your cap. It would have been preferable for me to get guys playoff experience, and it would have been good for a lot of younger guys like Tyson Forster, Sam Harrison, Cam York, on and on down the list, Noah Cates, and other young players to get playoff experience. But the goal of this is not to make the playoffs. The goal of this is not to become a team that goes, okay, we checked some box, we made it to the playoffs. This rebuild is, it, damn, it better not be about that. I know it's not about that because I know Danny Briere and I know Keith Jones and Dan Helferty in this organization. It's not about making the playoffs. It's about making yourself into a team that perennial, perennially makes the playoffs and can go on a run to try and end a drought since 1975 in this town. That's what it's about. I'm disappointed that this year's team didn't make the playoffs because I think that the experience that would have been gained would have helped towards future teams' ability once they make the playoffs to understand what it feels like, the intensity that is required in the Stanley Cup playoffs. That's why I think it would have been good to make the playoffs. There's some p t players here with experience, whether it's Travis Konechny or Sean Couturier or Garnet Hathaway. There's other players, too. Uh, but I thought it would have been good for this team to make the playoffs so some of those younger players could get a taste of what it's like, what it's going to take in the playoffs. Ultimately, it didn't happen. And yeah, I'm disappointed, and I ain't going to apologize for it. This team had it in their hand, and they had an 0-6-2 and slump at the worst time of the year. Now, you look at Washington, for example. They had a seven-game skid. They had it a little earlier than the Flyers did. They had five games on the other side of their skid where they won four of their last five, and they got into the playoffs. Flyers didn't. And that's where you sit. And you look, every player, every coach— Everybody, every fan, myself, you, and everybody else, we got to chew on that now for damn near six months, and it sucks. There was, there was something to be gained. 
And I know that people say, now, well, you knocked on the playoff door. Now you're going to draft 12th, depending what happens in the lottery, blah, 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 blah. And, and I'm already getting messages from people. Oh, they should have tanked or they should stop with this. They should have tanked. If you want to say they should have tanked, take it to a friend who's receptive to the argument because I don't give a crap about that. I think your belief in, oh, they should have sucked this year so they got a better draft. I think your belief is stupid. How's that? I think it's a loser's lament. But we'll get into that. I'm just, I'm riffing today. I hate the NHL offseason. I, as you can see, I am miserable already. Miserable. I don't want to wait until September for preseason hockey. I don't want to wait until October for another season to begin. I wanted a playoff game in a couple of days. It didn't happen. I'll get over it. And that's why I'm not doing evaluation thing right things right now. I'm not ready to do any of that stuff right now. I'm not there mentally. I got a DM from a guy right, literally, right after the game. Flyers are back is his, is his handle. And he immediately sends me this DM. He says, I think this year was a step back, not forward. You lost Cutter and Hart, two of your big rebuilding pieces. You're picking 12th in an average draft. I know people are going to say they're heading in the right direction with how they played, but I think this was our best playoff chance for the next three years. My response was seriously not ready to start this conversation. First of all, I think it's an idiotic thing to even say right now. You have no clue what's going to happen in the offseason. What kind of trade could take place or free agent sign? It's not a great free agent class. What are you going to trade to get something? But, like, seriously, are you seriously, like, you're going to go down that route already? We got a whole offseason. Pace yourself. Like, seriously, this year may look like a step backwards next year. Next year may be a step backwards compared to this year. Was it a step backwards for the New Jersey Devils this year? Yeah. They didn't make the playoffs. They went to the playoffs the year before and won a round, and this year they're not going back. But does that mean that the whole – look, like development of players, it's not necessarily this perfect linear line that goes up. Rebuilding is not that way. I don't know what next year has in the store. I'll worry about that after all the roster moves, all the everything is done. I can't worry about that now. Let the people – Sit in their crap. Let them absorb it. Don't go on to next year right now. I don't know why there's a rush to do that and deem next year a worse year than this year. I just don't get it. I don't get it sometimes. But that's my process. Maybe you have your process. And I mean, for a guy to say to me, I think this was their best playoff chance for the next three years. I think that's one of the dumbest effing statements that I've gotten in any DM all year. Flyers back. I'm sorry, dude. You might be a, a good. You're a good fan, and you're entitled to believe that. But I think it's insanely stupid to have that thought seconds after the final horn. You don't even know what the next three years are. Yeah, they did lose Carter Hart, and that's a big loss. And Cutter Gauthier may end up being a big loss as well. We'll see about Drysdale and how he develops next year. I'm hoping to see Drysdale next year make the steps that Cam York made this year. That's my hope. And I'll take a, a, a top pairing or second pair, right-handed D over a scoring winger every day of the week. Every day. The position just means more. Sorry, it does. Sorry, scoring wingers. Your position's not as important as a right-handed defenseman. But, geez... To go, this was their best playoff chance of the next three years when Matvey Michkov's coming over. They have two first-round picks this year. You had Michkov and Bonkla. Like, come on. That is being so overwhelmingly dramatic in the moment to send me a DM that's like that. I don't know. I don't know. I got to pace myself this offseason. We'll get to the whole thing about evaluations. I'm assuming probably tomorrow will be Flyers exit day. And I'll be there. I'm going to tape about 20 interviews. 
with players, talking to them about their season, the ups, the downs, what they are going to take from it, what they're going to learn, what they're going to – all of those things. And we'll play those throughout the next couple of months. But, damn, I'm – just in this moment, I, I mean, I sometimes you need to just sit in your crap, sit in it for a little while. Because that's what makes sports great. Suffering makes winning better after you've suffered. Now, nobody should have to suffer, but that's sports. You're going to lose. And you don't have to accept it. I don't like it. I'm not glad that I have to sit in the crap of disappointment, sports disappointment right now. But you remember how it feels. Because if you get to the other side where they win, it feels even better. I'm not looking to numb the pain or not looking to go, Oh, like like who, like if they would have made the playoffs this year, and like the guy said in his DM, their best chance to make the playoffs. This year, I don't think they were going past a round. I think they were going to get if they were the third seed, they were going to get punched in the face real good by a Carolina team, and if they were wild card two, which was they were fighting for last night, they would have had to face the New York Rangers. Yeah, it would have been fun. Absolutely. Lavi and the Rangers went on to win the President's Trophy. We'll see how what they can do in the playoffs. They're a good team. But this notion to have to start crapping on the next couple of years already after this season, like we haven't even let it sink in yet. I mean, I'm taping this at 11.30 after the game. I am still nowhere near processed enough on what happened last night or what's going to happen this offseason, let alone the year after that or the year after that. Like, I just don't get it. But, again, like always, I don't I don't pre-plan a lot. I come on here and I'm just shooting from the cuff, shooting what I feel right now. And right now, I'm pretty disappointed. I like the fact that the, after the team went 0-6-2 on that eight-game winless skid, that they came back and, you know, they win that Ranger game. They win the one nothing Devil game. And then I thought that they spilled it last night. I thought that they worked their butt off last night. I thought they defended great in the game against Washington. Ultimately, though, you know, their inability to score put them in the position that they were in and the stretch of really poor performances against, you know, teams that aren't that good in Montreal. And, I mean, Montreal, how about them spitting the bit two nights in a row with a lead against Detroit? Crazy. That's the NHL, though. That's hockey in a nutshell. And Flyers lost their ability to control their own destiny. So they have no one to blame but themselves. What they do with it is all that matters now going forward. How guys learn from it. I'm incredibly proud of Sam Harrison because he was struggling bad. Like his numbers just weren't bad. He was struggling. It was, whoa, this isn't good. But the way he performed in the last three games that he played after playing a lot of hockey, I'm impressed by him. I'm proud of him, the way he rebounded in those last three games. There's a lot of guys that I thought you know, really – Really dug in. Played well. I mean, one of the greatest stories of the season. I think I think the, the greatest single individual player story of this season, Erson's a good one. It had ups and downs, no doubt about it. I mean, the, to me, the greatest player story of this season is Cam York, but we'll get into all that. So we'll see where it goes. We'll redux, and we'll get to tweets like flyers or backs or DMs and We'll answer them and we'll dissect that about where this team's going and what it looks like. But I'm not ready to do it just yet. Some people might be. I'm not there. So we'll be back tomorrow. We'll have another Flyers Daily. We'll have one tomorrow. What's tomorrow? Uh, when or Tomorrow's Thursday. And we'll have one Friday. Uh, maybe we'll have off for the weekend I think I've done like 192 episodes in a row, having a day off. So I'll be ready to have a day off. Um, as much as I don't want it, uh, I'll be ready for the day off. 
and uh, we'll get after it. We're going to have Flyers Exit Day interviews. We'll have Danny Briere on, Keith Jones, and we'll redux this whole thing. I think on tomorrow's episode, we'll get to our first installment of Moments That Mattered in the first half. Good, bad, performances, individual performances, all that stuff. We'll, we'll begin that, and we'll begin the redux. In the meantime, I'm just going to catch my breath today. Catch my breath, and I'm going to sit in it. So I remember what it feels like. Sitting in it is not a bad thing. We'll be back tomorrow on a brand new Flyers Daily.